Sir John. Yeah, you made it and on time. It really is 8:10. Good evening, sir. Thank you for inviting me here. And I'll tell you, I'm, I, I've been on a few webinars in the last few days, um, and I was really looking forward to this one. I hope everything is good with you and your family, and, and, I, and I hope everyone's safe in, in Taiwan. I really miss Taiwan. I was, I was going there a lot, and because of this, um, the lockdown here and the travel restrictions in Taiwan and also here in Singapore, I might not be able to go this year. It's probably going to be like next year before I go. Before anything else, can you tell us about you and Beam and Go? For those who don't know me, uh, my parents are originally from the Philippines. They're from Macaulay. And my dad migrated to the U.S. and that's why I was born in the U.S. Um, so I grew up most of my life in the U.S. and about 15 years ago, I moved to Singapore. And I always um, was very interested in computers and computer uh, software and, and stuff online. So I ran a software company prior to, to, to doing Beamigo and I was very fortunate. I, I got involved in some very interesting projects um, on social media, on market research and finance. But then, you know, like sometimes um, you do things for a while and you kind of go through that grind and it might have been exciting when you first begin. And then you realize, wow, there, there might be something missing. Um, I remember when somebody came to me with this idea of Meme Go, which was, and I think you explained it uh, prior to me coming online, you know, a marketplace where uh, an OF can buy stuff for their family without sending cash. And I remember my own family would do the same thing. They would send cash back to, you know, my uncles and aunts. And there was always, you know, like, People buying beer, people buying cigarettes, not not necessarily buying the, the the stuff that the money was intended for. Wow, you know this is this is what I really this is what I really want to do. You know, like working at a bank and working you know, on social media and things like that was all fun, but you know I wanted to do more, right, with my life. So um, you know I'm, I'm so happy I met someone like Albert. I'm happy I met people like Jackie and Shelly and there's another gentleman you haven't met yet. Uh, just like a whole bunch of people. We've been doing it for four or five years now and we've had a lot of success stories. People like, you know, when I go to a, an event, like we'll do cultural, a lot of OS would come in and they kind of remember me, see me on, on Facebook. And some of them are like crying. Sir John or John, we're so happy we use you guys because before that, you know, our money wasn't being spent properly. Because of you guys, my daughter was able to graduate from high school. And that's a true story. And I, and I never knew. It's like, for me, it's like, okay, I, I think you can do a positive impact. But I didn't know how how much of an impact it was until we really started doing it. And I heard you talking about the rice donation. And, uh, I know we'll talk about it a little bit more, but it, it's kind of like it's in the same vein of like what we've been doing for the past four or five years. It's yeah. really empowering migrant workers, empowering OFWs, yeah. also, you know, uh, making sure that their family gets fed because the sacrifices and the hard work that they do, you, you know, you want the benefits of that too. It's not just, oh, let's send money back, let's, it, it's, you know, so, so that the kids get it. Uh, get to go to school, the electricity is on, uh, you know, they get food. And so um, our platform always does that, but with the rice donation, it's coming at a time where there's a lot of people who actually uh, are coming on hard times. And Maybe you can help us understand what are the services of Beam and Go. Maybe before I even talk about the services, uh, I can say like why we did it, right? Like what problem we're solving. Um, so, so for a lot of women, they'll use the way they take care of their family. They just send cash back to their parents. I mean, they can also send a ballot buy box, but that's usually more for a holiday and it takes too long. It takes like two months, three months. So a lot of times they send cash and they send cash to, let's say, like a Western Union or through a bank. And, it, it, you know, cash is great because you can use cash to buy practically anything, but that's also why it's bad. Because when it gets into the hands of, of, of somebody on the other side, they, they may buy groceries, they may pay for the electricity bill, but they may also go gambling, they may go buy uh, alcohol and cigarettes. Like my, my own family members, they, they did that. Um, but on our platform, what they can do is they can go online, buy groceries, buy medicine. They can, uh, we're adding bill payments now. Without having to send money to somebody in their family over there uh, and hope that they do it, 
the OFW can go onto our platform and do it themselves and make sure that ensures that their family is going to get what they want them to get. The Beam It Goes all about. This is really like the, the hard work of like someone like Albert and Jackie and Shelly. Uh, I'm here in Singapore. Um, I don't really uh, go source for merchants like those guys do. Those guys are, they're beasts, are amazing. Like every week when we have a, our executive meeting on the Monday, they're saying like, oh, we're going to have, you know, uh, uh, more vegetables. We're going to have, bring up appliances. We're going to have more restaurants. It's like every week there's like five to ten new things that are coming onto our platform. Um, but with the vegetables, it was like one of those things is like our advocacy is not just giving control, but it's also about uplifting the family. Um, so my background is my dad is a doctor. So I kind of have like, I, I believe that health is very important. My dad always said to me, like health is the most important thing that you have. If you don't have that, no matter how much money you have, it's, it's, uh, it, uh, it's not, you're, you're not going to have a good life. Um, and what we found was, uh, as we were doing this business, we found that Filipinos had the highest instances of high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes. I mean, even in my own family, we, like half my family has diabetes. And it, a lot of it is diet. It, it's not hereditary. I mean, you should do you should do a, a segment with Albert about health because he had high blood pressure and he changed it around with diet and exercise. Yeah, yeah, and he did it in the last three or four years because what we did about three or four years ago, we did a study. We actually talked to doctors and to understand like what would be a, a, how to kind of like change the diet of a, a regular Filipino diet and started like really simple thing. It was just like just have broccoli one time a week because you can't tell people to have broccoli five times a week and then it just like if there was a plan like brock one serving of broccoli a week and then it just went from there and then we started thinking hey you know what would be great is if we can also provide that not just tell people to do it but have a means for people to get the to get the vegetables too I, i'll tell you that whether it's a quarantine period or not a quarantine it is difficult and that's why it's so important to have a great team. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, everyone sees, like, oh, I'm a CEO, and, and, and that's cool. It's like I do make a lot of decisions, and I do drive what the business does. And, and But, you know, guys like Albert, and I keep mentioning these guys because they're so important to the company, right? Like Albert, Jackie, Shelly, now Justin. And, I mean, I, I, I can name all of them. Like, we have 19 people on our team. Yeah, that's right. Like, I think a year ago, it was about 13. And we're, and we're still hiring. And I guess the thing is, it, is the bosses is, every boss is a little different, right? Like, when you hear stories of bosses that they're like, it's like, they have to do things. They, they have their way, and if you don't do it, you know, you're out. Kind of like, was like that, right? I mean, for me, is um, I think I'm, I'm a lot more empathetic. My parents were like that, and I think it's also like the Filipino way too, right? I mean, like, Filipinos are, are a lot more empathetic, kind, and people always say that, especially about me and Albert, it's like, you guys are like the nicest guys. You guys should be meaner. It's just like, that's not what we are, right? I mean, yeah. we believe that, you know, teamwork is how you win. Um, it's like, what's important to us is our customers. Mm -hmm. but what's also important to us is our employees. Like, it's very important, like, you know, they're like our family, like we work with them, every, you know, five days a week, and it's not eight hours, it's 12 hours, sometimes it's even more. Um, and they have families, and you, you want to make sure that, you know, that, the, I, the thing is, I always feel it's an honor, so this is my, my second company that I've ran. I feel it's an honor for someone who wants to work in, in my company. Yeah. Because it, it just, it, they can work anywhere, right? But they decided to work in, in in, in my company so I always feel that it's an honor that, that they do that so it's my job to make sure that they have all the tools they can support their family and, and that's really uh, I think as a boss I think that's really really important does this situation affect you yeah I'll tell you running a company it's like I, I, I've done I've done things um, I've done talks I've actually taught before too I, I was a, I was a, a professor at a school um, at, at a university in, in in, um, in New York and people always come to me and they say like hey uh, what's the advice you give and I was in Taiwan too I was like I gave a talk at NCTU or NTCU 
like whether it's COVID or not COVID, it's you worry a lot. You're worrying like every day, like you know, seven days a week. Every time, like before you go to sleep, when you wake up, you're worrying about something. Since COVID happened, the worries change, right? So when when the whole uh, COVID nineteen happened around February and March, me and Albert had to think like, how are we going to survive, right? Because we already knew what was going to happen. Like we knew that there's a potential for lockdowns. There's going to be people losing their their jobs.、Um, there's going to be fear of just health in general. Exactly.、Um, so we we took a we we had to, like to, we had to deal with it inside our company, and then we had to deal with it for our customers. So、um, we made some we made some cuts in in our company to kind of conserve cash, just、mm-hmm. be ready for that.、Um, I mean, one one of the biggest things was we let go of our office in Mandaluyong, so we don't have an office anymore. Everybody works from home. I really enjoy kind of just sitting in front of the computer and and kind of thinking through some problems.、Mm-hmm. Um, uh, using like we use Slack, which is kind of like a, a chat program,、mm-hmm. um, and we share files. I mean, we do talk on the phone too.、Um, But it, it was like it, it showed to me like wow I don't really need that much human contact I must be an introvert because I actually enjoy it.、Um, but what really helped us from working at home is number one everyone had internet、yeah. which which isn't always a guarantee in the Philippines. But <laughs> yeah, and, and then we have the tools like we 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 do everything online and that helps a lot too.、Um, uh, and then we're I think. It, it goes back to also the team that it, it, people are pretty disciplined, and our team is the type that <laughs> I don't know if this is good or bad, but you can ping them at like nine thirty, ten o'clock, and they're awake. They're doing, you know, they're doing something.、Uh, and it's just everyone has such a great, great attitude, and they're into it. Was there a space for depression or anxiety somehow? Like you feel a little bit sad, or like maybe doubt, just. Because of the quarantine, does it ever come to you? Because with with us, like normal people, <laughs> yeah, we feel that a lot. How do you cope up with that kind of feeling? For me, is、uh, I got into a pretty interesting routine. So I, I, I mean, even before this, I I did work out, but now、uh, I do more workout. Like I dance. I use like this app, like this Nike training app.、Um, And I do all these exercises. I eat better. I actually、uh, lost body fat, and like I, I kind of trimmed down in the last two months. And then at night, I I, I pretty much Netflix and chill. I I, I, I watch TV shows, <laughs> read, and、um, and I guess you know it, it's funny like working from home, and I, and I think I probably work more hours now than I did before.、Mm-hmm. But I also feel more balanced. For some reason, there's more like there's things I do now that I like. I used to never watch TV. Like I like I never watch. Like now I watch like comedy shows that kind of just chill out. Before I never did. I just work, come home, eat, sleep, and then I you know something like that. COVID happened,、uh, and I touched on it earlier. Is that three things happened with our customers? Right. Number one was they were really worried about the health of their of their family members because like Philippines was like no testing. Right,、uh, the lack of、uh, personal protection equipment.、Uh, just the hospitals are normally overstaffed. I mean, sorry, understaffed,、yeah. overcrowded. So, so there was that. Then the other thing was、um, because of the lockdown,、uh, the super, the lines at the supermarkets were really long. Like, True. It took like hours to just get into the supermarket to buy stuff. And then when they got in, like people were hoarding stuff. When they when they did get it, so supplies were, were low. So that's the second thing we were hearing. The second thing we were hearing from most of us was like, oh, you know, we're,、uh, my family's isolated, or and then when they go out, it's hard to get supplies. And then the last thing was there's a big fear about losing their jobs, especially、yeah. seafarers, domestic、yeah. helpers, and service staff because、yeah. service staff, let's say here in Singapore, is closed out. So what we did is we kind of took a different.、Uh, I mean.、Uh, um, The, the rice donation is only one third of of what we're doing for 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 OFW during this COVID period. To address their concerns, we actually went out and looked for suppliers that could provide N95 masks,、wow. thermometers, 
Uh, we also partnered up with a telemedicine provider so that if you had any health issues, you could just call. You don't have to like go to the hospital or emergency room. Wow. Um, the other thing to, to combat like people um, not having to go out and, and go to a supermarket is is the rice delivery, it's yeah. the meat delivery, vegetable delivery. In the beginning, when we first started, we could only do Metro Manila because we, I know. we didn't, uh, it wasn't something that we were planning to do. And then when COVID hit, we just like Jackie and Albert and Shannon, they just went crazy. And now we can pretty much cover um, uh, parts of Visayas and, and parts of uh, Mindanao, right? Um, and so now these people have a way to get food without having to risk going out and in line. And, and, and uh, you know, um, the rice donation was the last part, is because we saw people lose their jobs. And it was, it was we're really fortunate, uh, like we kind of stumbled upon this. People came to us. And I think for everybody else, uh, you know, this is, it, it is a tough time, right? Because yeah. we, all have, we all have to worry about health. We all have to worry about um, our livelihood, the economy, and uh, so, so my words to everybody is, you know, just you know, try to be as positive as possible, stay positive, yeah. but also stay safe, stay healthy, do what you have to do to maintain all that. Um, and you know, it's like it's, it's sometimes life is like that, right? It's not yeah. going to be easy. Yeah. But, you know, we'll we'll get through it. Yeah, and I do agree with that. And with you telling us about to relax, you know. <laughs> you know, I really like how you handle the situation with you and the team. And that's a good thing for all the people that's going to watch and who are watching right now because they would, they would, perhaps they learned a lot from you. They, they would know that it's important to have a good team. Now, with, with outside work, it's important to have a family. Which is w one of the one of the positive thing right now for COVID nineteen because we yeah. get to spend right. yeah right we get to spend a lot of time with our with our with our partner with our kids and we don't have to have um, a lot of time working in the office. I think yeah. it's it's a good realization that yeah it's possible to work with the family and, and that's the best thing yeah. for me. Yeah. I thank you. I hope to see you again in person. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I think um, that's it for tonight, John. Thank you very much, okay. and take good care. Also, with with the whole family, God bless you. Will do, will do. Okay, take care, everybody. Have a good one. Yes. Bye, John. Okay. Bye.